morning, guys. How are you today? So, what day is it? Friday, right? We're usually excited about Fridays, but Friday is kind of like every other day now in this new normal. The frick, this, this new normal. Isn't this just crazy that we're all dealing with this? Um, just gonna wait for a few minutes. Uh, Nadine, I'm gonna let some people come on and say good morning to everyone and see how everyone's doing right now. One of the things that I'm going to talk about today is writing, writing a book. Has anybody out there ever thought about writing a book? I myself have thought about writing a book. It's something that I do wanna do, but it is certainly overwhelming to think about writing a book. So if you're out there and you have thought about writing a book or a blog, short story, is anyone out there a writer? Because I, I don't know, the thought of writing is definitely overwhelming. Um, and where do you start? That's what I wanna know. Does anybody have any good jokes? Because I would love to have a good laugh. One of the ones that I just recently saw was uh, there was the wife on the couch and the husband sitting behind and she looks back at him and is like, you know, stop blinking so fucking loud, right? Are we all feeling that way? Like it's so, we are confined. We're all together all the time. Um, my first book is being published on April 14th. Congratulations. What is your book about? Uh, because I know myself, I want to write a book. I want to write a book about my life, but I want it to be like an inspirational type of thing. I don't want to drag everyone through like all the crap I went through, uh, through my life, but it's made me who I am today. So if you have thought about writing a book or if you are starting to write a book or you have written a book, I would love for you guys to jump in. I have this woman on Nadine and she has a children's book series called Free to the Frog. And through these books, she approaches different topics. So we are able to talk to our children, my children about them. Um, Let's see, what is this? Uh, oh, that's incredible. I have some pointers that my editor and publisher told me. That is wonderful. So I am going to bring Nadine on. We're going to talk with her, see about how she, she has done, and maybe she can spark something inside of us, encourage us to do something, get started. And good morning. Hey, hey. Good Hi. morning. Hi, nice seeing you. <laughs> so good to see you. You too. I, I, I grabbed another cup of coffee. Okay, well, I joined you here with my tea, so there. <laughs> so it's just saying dog mom, right? The dogs out there, oh. they're like, they're the ones benefiting the most out of us being confined in our homes, I think. Absolutely, and thank you for giving me an excuse to get out of my pajamas this morning. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Nadine, you have written a, book, a series of books, but you're also a lawyer. Right. What yeah, does that look like thing. today? Um, actually, it's good. It's, it's, uh, we're able to do work virtually, help our clients virtually. So that's my other hat. It's, um, it's working well. So, so if let's just say somebody needs a lawyer right now, like it, can you reach out to a lawyer and you, and you said you're doing virtual court cases? Is that right? Yeah. The courts have gone virtual. Uh, the clients can participate by telephone. So it, it's, I think most law firms have adjusted. Uh, we, while our staff went virtual, uh, the courts went virtual, the clients can have phone conferences or video conferences with us. So I think we're just all kind of making do and adjusting. I think it's great. You know, right now in the news, all they ever talk about is COVID-19 and we do need to be informed, Right. but life is still going on for everyone, right? right. We, we have all of these things that are happy, happening to us, good, bad, and ugly, and we need to be able to reach out and know that we still have help that's available. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's great. I think most businesses are kind of 
on the fly learning to adapt because we have no yeah. choice and sort of make, I mean, obviously, um, you know, first and foremost is everybody's safety, but then if everybody's safe, they're trying to kind of sort of make um, lemonade out of lemons, meaning just do the best they can with what they have. Absolutely. So we were going to talk about writing books. So in, on top of being a lawyer, you're an author. Right. A series of books. Right. Yes. I have, <laughs> I have my Freedom of the Frog series, um, which is, I have the fifth book coming out June 2nd for gay families. They, the books all address different either types of family situations or just real life stuff that kids go through. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to actually be doing a virtual story time because I, I obviously had to cancel my live events. So yes kind of things change, we had to evolve. So I'll be doing uh, live story time for 201 Magazine and hopefully uh, soon for Barnes and Noble National and then just some other Free to the Frog story times. Uh, actually, the third book, which is Free to the Frog is on the Move is about helping kids deal with change or any major life change. So that's kind of relevant right now. So that's the first book I'll be reading. That's wonderful. And, and right now with parents at home with younger children, They also need things to entertain their children. So right. I think it's great that you're going to do these uh, videos of you reading these books, but in a fun way. Yeah, we're going to try. We're going to experiment. My first time using a green screen, so I might look a little dorky out there, but <laughs> we're going to try to make it as fun as we can. I think that's great. So how many books? You have five books. So tell us what each one of them are about. Sure. I have, I happen to have them sitting right here. So awesome. The covers. <laughs> so in this book, it's not really meant just the series, not just meant for kids who are going through the situations, but for their friends to help them become a little more aware. Mm -hmm. um, and to tr sort of present these either types of families or real life issues in a, in a non doom and gloom kind of way. Yeah. Um, so that kids can feel comfortable talking about it. Um, the first book, which is free to the frog gets a divorce. We meet the characters, um, Freya gets divorced and the kids understand what that means and that, you know, mommy and daddy still love them. Yes. And then we have the second book, which is Frida the Frog and her new blue family. And um, Frida meets a blue frog who has a blue tadpole, Jack, and they get married and they become a new blended family. So it's just um, discussing di diversity and just blended families of all types. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I was mentioning before, we have Freedom of the Frogs on the Move, which is um, the, the family needs to move to a bigger lily pad in Port Frogfly, of course. Yes. <laughs> and they, um, they need a bigger lily pad. They move, and the kids are not exactly thrilled about changing schools. So it's helping kids deal with any kind of major life change or um, issues and just kind of the change doesn't have to be so scary. That's kind of the point of it. And then um, Frida says, Frida the Frog says farewell to her fish is just um, the family gets a new pet fish. And unfortunately, Goldie the fish gets sick and passes away. So it's dealing with them, death, right? Right. Deal with their feelings mm -hmm. surrounding love and loss. And then in our new book, Frida the Frog and the Two Mamas Next Door, which I don't have yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> available now for pre order, but it's um, releasing June 2nd. That book is, um, they meet the two moms on the lily pad next door and um, Irene and Morgan. And um, the kids find out that moms, families are not, or parents are not always a mom and a dad. Sometimes they are, but sometimes it could be a single parent. It could be two moms, it could be two dads. So um, we're having that in pride in time for pride month. I think that's wonderful that, Thanks. you know, I think with kids, a lot of times, you know, we say, Oh, they're resi resilient. They'll get through it and this and that. But, you know, children have a lot of emotion, especially like even what we're dealing with right now, the trying to understand it, you know, trying to adapt to it, right. just like us. And, you know, for us, we're all handling this in a different way. And I think that when we are doing that, we're pushing that on our children. And, um, I think it's fantastic that these real life issues that you're bringing them alive in these books so you can address them in a way that's understandable. Right. Thank you. Yeah, that's where we're trying to kind of um, like our tagline on our website says helping families of all species one tadpole at a time. 
We're try yeah. <laughs> trying to get the word out um, and just kind of make these conversations, which some people feel might be, you know, taboo or just uncomfortable to talk about, to just make it mainstream and sort of like no big deal. No big deal. And right. exactly. And it shouldn't be. But let's so let's talk about writing a book. Like what even sparked that inside of you? So I've always been, um, I guess, creative. Um, I liked, I took art classes growing up. I liked writing, poems, short stories, that sort of thing when I was younger. I, I kind of knew in the back of my mind I wanted to be a writer of children's books. Um, I went down a different path, of course, with law and stuff like that. But um, for me, the, the way I got started, even though I'd always write as a hobby, I took a, a class of writing and illustrating children's book course in the city at a school. And it kind of taught you start to finish to how to write a book. So I would say to anybody out there who's really serious about writing, not just for a cathartic reason, but just to get a, to really look on work on a book, um, it's good to take a course and educate yourself on kind of the background stuff on how to. That's Beyond that, you know, for me, it was, um, it was very easy because I talked about something that was relevant to me. It was something that was going on in my life, which was my mom, Frida, who's the original Frida, was getting divorced. <laughs> so it yeah. kind of made... I tried to, because um, I, I like to try to joke around and stuff, I tried to kind of, in a lighthearted way, talk about Frida the Frog getting divorced. Mm -hmm. um, I never did anything with it until um, many years later when, unbeknownst to me at the time I wrote it, I got married and got divorced. <laughs> and there weren't a lot of um, books out there, in my opinion, that spoke to kids on a level that they could relate to that wouldn't scare the heck out of them about yeah. divorce. Right. So I, I was able to, fortunate to get a publisher, and I um, was able to get that first book started. So I would say to anybody getting started, I mean, the first thing after kind of, you know, doing your research, doing your homework, is either writing about something that, a topic that really you feel strongly about, that really speaks to you about, mm -hmm. or that you can relate to on a personal level. So it's kind of just a natural, you know, the words sort of flow out naturally for you. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really a struggle to come up with what you want to write or talk about because it's just happening. It's happening to you. It's something you feel in your heart that you can just get out on the page. So for someone that is considering it very strongly, and, and I myself am, am one of those people, it can become very overwhelming. Like, you know, do you sit down and you just start writing it or do you jot down a journal and then as things happen, you know, you you build upon it, like, how do we start? That's um, a good question. <laughs> so I, first thing I would say is try to find a quiet spot where nobody's gonna bug you and you can actually focus and think, <laughs> which is yeah. very hard to do, especially for most of us that are parents and juggling work and everything else, that's hard. But if you can find some quiet time, that's the first thing. Um, for me, you know, everybody kind of has a different style. So what works mm -hmm. for me may not work for everybody else. But for me, right. I sort of, a few months before I'm going to actually get the pen to paper, I sort of start th thinking through the story and what I want to say and how I want to say it. Mm -hmm. I also try to do some research. Um, so, for example, so each of my first four books were all topics that I and my family went through, so I was able to easily write about it. Yes. The fifth topic that's coming out for gay families, I, um, I just felt it was really important to get out there. And... Um, Moving from New York City, where there's a you know billion gay families and we had a lot of gay you know friends with gay parents, I moved mm -hmm. to the suburbs. I found it very jarring that that my my kids had one friend with two dads, so I just thought it was an important topic to get out there, and especially with Pride Month coming and stuff. Um, but at, at the time I wrote it, I didn't have anyone in my family that immediate family that was gay, so I started doing my homework, which I recommend if you, if it's not something you can relate to, I started talking to some gay friends, um, some of who had kids, some mm -hmm. of who spoke to me from the perspective of a um, adult who as a kid who's coming out didn't have, feel that they could talk about it. Right. So I kind of did my research and getting their family feelings and how to tell it in the appropriate way. Now, yeah. this is a mainstream topic, obviously, unbeknownst to me at the time I started writing, my oldest daughter ended up um, in the midst of it, writing the book, coming out to my husband and I to tell us that she was in a relationship with a woman. So, um, wow, so you, you were, you did have that in your family. <laughs> so I ended up, <laughs> I had not planned, uh, didn't know that, but it ended up being relevant to me on a personal level. Um, so I did my homework, but for example, for the next book, I'm going to, you know, each for me, my series, each book picks up where the last one left off. 
Yeah. I'm going to have, um, it's going to be on adoption. We're going to find out that they have a friend who's adopted. So I don't, I, that I can say with confidence. I have nobody in my family that's been adopted. Yes. So I have, but I have several friends who have adopted kids. So I'm going to do my research and speak to them to kind of get out sort of a little bit what they went through and the emotions and what they would want to tell if it was their story. So that's wonderful. Just want to say, um, Someone made a comment here. I'm a former divorce attorney turned writer as well. I teach mindfulness and meditation to kids and parents exactly because what you are sharing. Oh, nice. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, for, <laughs> thank you for sharing that. And actually, um, we have something in common, the person who just said that, because I, um, I used to teach kids yoga, and I still teach restorative yoga. And yeah. I think getting kids to be mindful, however you can, whether it's telling stories through yoga, meditation, it's just so important because a lot of us just kind of like go through life, you know, just without thinking about it. And it's mm -hmm. really, if you can like pause and stop and think, it really, I think is great for everybody, but especially kids. I, you know, that's one of the things and it always comes up, especially with a lot of people that are doing things about the being mindful, meditation, yoga. Um, and, and what can come to you from that? Right. Um, I myself, I, I do meditate. And that's something that has helped me um, through my healing process. That was a big part of my healing process. And now I, I try to quiet my mind for ideas. And just as I took a little time to meditate, uh, one of my favorite people to listen to is Abraham Hicks. I don't know if you've ever listened to her, but she talks about your vibration and lifting your vibration and um, the, the different steps and, and receiving uh, the ideas from the universe. And so I quieted my mind and I had this incredible idea of a new show. So it's, a, it's a really incredible when you take that time to quiet your mind, and I don't care at what level you're at, what you can draw from that um, and the positivity that you can draw from that. And for children, just learning to breathe and a coping me mechanism, right? A tool. Right. I completely agree. Um, I think that's great. And I think it's great that you do meditation and that what you share with your followers is amazing. Um, me being one of them, because I think it's really, uh, I really like that you speak from the heart and it's things that people can relate about. Um, I actually, um, for those of you who, who don't know her page, my friend Tara Natalie, who you're friends with too, Tara Natalie, yes. T-H-A-R-A-N-A-T-A-L-I-E, her page is great. I've been starting every day. She's doing this thing called Daily Meds, where she has a 15-minute yes. meditation, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Because I think most of us, uh, myself included, we go through periods where we just, you know, because of the news and what's going on, we feel anxious. And um, her meditation, like starting it every day that way, has really helped me um, start my day in a different kind of light and looking at things a little calmer and different differently. Um, yes. But, write, you know, writing, meditation, those are great outlets. Um, anything creative, I mean, even... Like last week, my daughter, um, last weekend, of course, we were doing nothing, right? We're in our pajamas. <laughs> yeah. Like every day, it's like every day is Groundhog's Day. <laughs> and she said, can we paint, Mommy? And I hadn't done that in years. I said, sure. And we started painting. And mm -hmm. um, I definitely did not make a Picasso-like painting. But <laughs> it didn't matter <laughs> because we had fun. And it was a great release. And, you know, we both just felt really happy and calm after. So writing, um, painting, drawing, meditating, anything you can do that's just kind mm -hmm. of an outlet from um, the news and the chaos that's going on around us, I think is really great. It's very cathartic. It definitely is. So let's say you've got your ideas, like you were talking about, and doing your homework. Um, like, how do you even, like, start to look for a publisher? So that's definitely a challenge, um, okay. <laughs> especially if you're not a celebrity, like I am not yet, <laughs> you know, until Frida becomes like the next Barney, um, <laughs> we're not there. So um, it's, it's difficult, right? Um, yeah. Most people, if you're not connected, if you're not already famous, it's hard to get started. 
Um, I was fortunate. I had a um, sorority sister of mine I was in touch with who had a couple of children's books published. She put me in touch with my publisher. Mm -hmm. um, so first thing I would say is networking um, is great. Putting it yes. out there sort of into the universe, but putting it out there that telling all your friends on social yeah. media, um, I'm, I'm going to be writing my first children's book or I'm going to be writing my first book. Does anybody know anybody? So networking. Um, if you can get an agent, that's great. It's, it's very difficult. Um, I briefly tried when I started and then I kind of, um, kind of gave up. I got daunted, but from what I understand, you know, there are ways to find one. So getting an agent is really, if you do your research and you find the appropriate agent to, um, that's, you know, whatever your genre is of book that you're writing. And you can, do can I just stop you right there? What, what does the agent do? So the agent will, um, if they take you on, and they're, from what I understand, again, I don't have an agent, but <laughs> from what I understand there, it seems that they're very, um, a lot of them don't take uh, new submissions, um, but the ones that do, they're specific to whatever genre you're writing on. And if they accept you, they will, tr they have the relationships with the publishers, um, certain big publishers. Mine is kind of a me uh, smaller size publisher, I would say, but certain bigger publishers will only take um, manuscripts submitted by agents. Okay. So for some of them, it's just to even get in the door, um, you need to have an agent. They won't even look at what you send them. So they'll make the introduction. They, they will um, oftentimes negotiate the terms of the contract once you get a deal. Mm -hmm. And they will, in exchange, they get a, a percentage. I think it's generally either 15 or 20% of, um, okay. I think, all the sales. But there are a lot of smaller publishers out there and you can right. self-publish, right? Right. So there are some people that self-publish on things such as um, Amazon. I know um, some people have done well with. Um, mm -hmm. There's a few other ones. I can't remember the names off the top of my head that are self-publishers. Mine is kind of, I'm, I'm with Mascot Books um, and they're terrific. Um, yeah. I, I'm very happy with them. They've been great. They, the illustrator um, who they picked, um, you know, in the first draft, I did my own illustrations and it was like a five-year-old drew them. <laughs> they, <laughs> they got a professional illustrator who made the, the story come to life. It was amazing. Um, wow. They're kind of a hybrid. They're not a self-publisher in terms of like Amazon. You can put out anything. Um, Mascot Books, they don't, they won't publish everything. Um, they have to believe in it and want to do it. And then they're sort of one of these hybrid publishers um, where there are certain costs as an author you do incur, um, me I mean, minimal compared to the quality of the book that they put out, so. How does it feel as a, an author, like when your first book came to life? It feels great. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of, for me, again, because most of the stories, um, I mean, the first one was about my mom, but they've been sort of based on, loosely based on my own life and, and experiences mm -hmm. and feelings that me and my kids had. Um, it's kind of cool to see it. And even um, when the second book came out and Freedom and Her Blue Tadpole and the uh, blue, blue Husband, rather, Blue Frog, <laughs> and <get> a Blue <laughs> Tadpole, you know, one of my, and my, my, um, my second husband, my, my current husband, and um, is a different ethnicity than I am. So one of my stepdaughters said, oh, where are the blue tadpoles? You know, kind of funny. So, yeah. <laughs> so pretty, it was pretty cool. That's wonderful. Not fly. Yeah. Now, I, I can only imagine because, I mean, I envision myself having my book. And um, I look forward to that one day. And what I'm doing is um, more journaling, writing things down, writing some stories from my past um, and I feel at some point that will come together. There's also ghost writers that you can have that can help you right. uh, put, put your books together. Right. Um, so as you tell your story, they write it for you, right? That, that's another great option, right? If you're not somebody who feels you can put it into words the way you want to, that's exactly right. You can hire somebody to help you <laughs> professionally yeah. do, that, do that and get the story out the way you want to tell it. So what does the rest of your day look like, Nadine? <laughs> I wish I could say something glamorous. So I might go back to putting my PJs on. <laughs> I'll have another cup of coffee and um, and then I will go back to my other hat, my, my lawyer job. And then and then I will go back to my um, my author stuff. I'm doing working on my virtual story time stuff and my all my fun free to the frog stuff. So I think it's great. So how did you come up with the name? 
Uh, so my mom is Frida. I, I joke okay. around. She spells it the wrong way. She's <laughs> F-R-I-E-D-A. I spelled yeah. it this way to make it easier for kids. And also the, the hidden meaning, which I think I first revealed on your talk show, was that um, it's F-R-E-E -E standing for Frida, but free. also for yeah. free, right? Free to express yeah. your feelings and be who you are. Yeah. So, um, and it just was a kind of a pun, like calling my mom Frida the Frog. So that's sort of how that happened. <laughs> I think it's great. You know, it's kind Thanks. of like, I talked about inventions yesterday, and I have someone on my show tomorrow that's helping us from A to Z with an invention, right? So, but maybe your invention is writing a book. And these are all creative, you know, the creative ability, these things are inside of us. And using this time as best as we can to bring them to life taking that quiet time to be able to do it. Um, I have another friend that, that has written several books. Mm -hmm. They help in business, but she does it in a fun way. And, you know, she's like, I'm using this time to write my third book. I haven't been able to do it with work getting in the way. So instead of looking at this as such a difficult time, oh my God, Nadine, look, your book's right here. Ah, <laughs> imagine that. It's right Great. here on my desk. Um, but just, you know, let's not look at this as such a negative right. and bringing something positive as we get out on the other side of this, because we will. And, and right. that's why I want to do this every day to bring to light the ability that we all have and using this time as best we can. I agree. I mean, right. Now we have the time to do things. I mean, looking at, obviously, without taking away or minimizing the seriousness of what's Absolutely. going on, we have time, um, those of us who are healthy, thankfully, um, have time to do a lot of things we didn't, we never did or that we hadn't had time to do that we've been putting off. And yes. I think it's great. And I think whatever you can do, whatever kind of outlet you have to help you get through this is great. Um, for me, you know, not to sound corny, but I feel like this was my calling, helping kids, helping families. So yes. come, you know, no matter how busy I might be with other stuff, I just, I have to do this. I have to get the stories out. I feel like these are stories that need to be told. Yes. Um, but I think even myself, you know, I, I started working uh, five years ago on a novel with my mom, Frida. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately we want to write a, um, sort of a fantasy type of Harry Potter-esque novel. We started it. We never did anything with it. It's just sitting there. I wrote the first chapter. Yeah. So now, after I'm done with filming my virtual story times, I just said to my mom, we need to pick that back up. Now we have time, and we can work on that. Absolutely. So I think whatever project you've been working on is great. Um, getting your kids involved is really great. So kind of try to find, to find a positive in all mm -hmm. of this. Mm -hmm. Find time to do these things. And Honestly, and I'm not just saying this because <laughs> on your show, but your show is really helping a lot of people kind of remind them of what's important and to get out there and, and to try to inspire people to kind of do what they can now. Thank you. Thank you. I do. I, I want people to live their ha happiest lives. Right. Like we all have the ability to do it. It's just finding what it is that makes you the happiest. And maybe there's some healing that needs to happen and then for you to move forward. But we all have that capability. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on and oh inspiring thank us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You're always happy to be on your show. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Nadine. And good luck with everything and the novel and the launch of your next books. Tell to free to the frog. What's the, what's the next one? Oh, um, the next one, and it's on my website, freedofthefrog.com, is um, Freed of the Frog and the Two Mamas Next Door. So come June 2nd, get excited, and <laughs> they'll be on Amazon and a bunch of other spots. So thank you. So these are great for teachers, for families. Yeah. Yes, yeah, therapists. To tools for, right, exactly. They're for the kids, who's my audience, but it's also meant to be tools exactly for teachers, for psychologists, for parents to just kind of open up the conversation and keep it going with these kids. Absolutely. Thank you again, Nadine. Have uh, a wonderful yeah. day. Okay. Bye. You too. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. -bye.